today I am taking a journal prompt from this really wonderful book, Your Story is Your Power, Free Your Feminine Voice. And I just randomly turned to a page this morning, and this is what I found. Fire, hire, or retrain aspects of yourself. This might be the most powerful practice that you can use in your internal world. It will reward you for life if you put the effort into it. As you gently bring self-awareness to your inner voices and fixations, you will gain the capacity to fire, hire, or retrain those voices and fixations. So what I did well, after reading that short passage in this book, I opened up a magazine and I intuitively selected images that just felt right. And I came up with what I would consider kind of a lot of dark images, okay? There's not a lot of bright colors in here. And that is just kind of what was coming up for me today. And a lot of these ones, a lot of these images I'll use in the background of my collage. But there was three images, no, maybe four, images that really stood out for kind of like, these aren't background images. They'll, they'll go on the forefront. And these two were the first ones that showed up. And it what this kind of, told me was this inner voice. There's this little dance going on inside of me. And then I have these two images and one of them is a, a face that the eyes are covered up. So she's she's blinded, right? And then another one is this elephant and you can't really see it down here, but the, it says strength and there's some uh, like a stone wall over here. So these are some really strong images that I'm very curious about. And when I place other images in the background, I'll start to bring together this story of what is happening. So I'm just going to play intuitively along with my magazine images. I have some craft paints and these colors are selected from the colors that are present here. In fact, I'm missing, I'm missing one, like a blue. There's a blue in there, right? There, that's a better match for the blue. This is how I pick colors. So I pick colors based on the images that I have. So I have a light blue. I have some oranges here, um, definitely a lot of browns, um, black and white, and a little bit of red. Other things that I have are some tissue papers. Don't know if I'll use all of these supplies, but I wanted to have them available to me. These are just supplies that I were intuitively calling me. Now these are some leftover scraps from um, an elementary, uh, elementary, I don't know if it's elementary school. They're from kids who were working on projects. And these were just little leftovers that were left over after they had cut things out. And I love having these available. So they're just these little odds and ends and scraps. I also have a couple of stencils that I made and some cosmetic sponges along with my matte medium some water, and several paintbrushes. All right, so I'm just gonna get started. I'm playing intuitively. The, like I said, these are images that I think are really prominent to the message. I'm gonna set these aside. These are gonna go on top of this collage background. All right. Hmm. I always like to start off just kind of, you know, arranging things around on the page, making sure, you know, I've got the right side of my images up that I picked out. I don't always cut as much as I did this time, but, you know, I always just go with what is coming up 
for me. Trying not to question it. Now, I don't know if these if these will all go down in this direction or, or what's going to happen, but I at least can look at this and go, okay, these, these do go together. So the next thing I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to put down some tissue paper. And this is just an old pattern. Let me all swat it up. Get some wrinkles in there. Okay, so that successfully, you know, it really pushed it back, really changed the whole look of what's going on here. So I had a lot of images that went down and a nice collaged background. And now I put this layer of tissue paper over the top, which by the way, could have been a thin layer of paint. It doesn't have to be, you know, a tissue paper. It could be, it could be a lot of different things, right? So I could continue to put down a little bit more tissue paper. I always just kind of reach for the supplies that are calling out to me. That's how I work intuitively. Maybe do a little of that. I don't know if I want to put color in it. Let's just see how that looks. See, I got a little bit of blue in there. A little bit of blue might be good. First off, I think I want to do some stenciling that's going to kind of blend in the background a little bit. So using some of these darker colors. Do I want to go this way or that way? I could do both. If I turn this one one way and then the other, it can make little cross hatches, right? <laughs> Might not line up perfectly, but We can try. Oh, that is really interesting. Oh, I love that. Now here's where I have to be careful because I really loved how that came out. So I'm tempted to, of course, do it a whole lot, but that usually doesn't work out. <laughs> Less is more. do 
edging on my journal pages because I think of it as like a container, especially if I'm working with something that has a strong emotional component to it. I like to contain those emotions. So I always think of doing these borders as a way to keep them, keep them in my journal page. So they don't seep out into my life. And plus it's a great way to, you know, use up the paint on your palette. <laughs> okay, so I've really got a great background going here. So now what I think I want to do is bring out these other images. And I did add one more because I thought this was a really strong image as well. You know, it's kind of like there's this, there's something, you know, for me, it just felt like there's something watching me. And I had some words cut out and I'm not sure about those. So I'm just going to set those aside. Just going to kind of lay things out, see how they work on the page, see what kind of placement is feeling. And, you know, some things like this one, I don't know if that really fits. Although maybe it's just the, the white on there and I can do something to take care of that. So I really like that placement of the images. So I'm going to go with that. And I do tend to go with my first instincts when I put images down. Uh, I try not to second guess things. Trusting that my first impression was the most meaningful. I think that takes a lot of trust. It takes letting go of what you think you need, you think needs to happen on your journal pages and allowing things to happen instead of making things happen. And that's when these really magical coincidences happen in your journals. It's, you know, the things that happen while you're not looking, while you're not overthinking it. This image, I want to do something to push that back, to push the white back. So I'm just kind of matching up colors with the backgrounds to see, you know, what one might blend it into the background the best. And then I'm going to put a little bit of matte medium on my brush because this is a really uh, opaque paint and I don't want it to cover up the image. I just want it to color the image. Step back a minute, take a look, see what we've got. I've got these other scraps. Oh, this is a really strong image. I'm not quite too sure what it is. It looks like maybe a scorpion. Like I said, these are just things that kids cut out from an art project that they were using. These are just like their leftovers.
like there's something missing up here. But I'm not sure what. I have a stencil of a, of a web. And I also have this stencil of these rays. Something like that. And I'm hoping that this yellow is transparent. A lot of times I will put white behind my yellow because I because yellow can be so transparent. But in this case, I want it to be transparent. There, that did it. That added what I thought was missing. And you know, when you're working in your art journals, tune in to that feeling. When you feel that something is missing, something is probably missing. <laughs> and sometimes, as soon as I have finished a spread, I get, the, I get the message that it's trying to send me. And other times, it takes me a little while. Today, I think it's going to take me a little while. But maybe it's more of leaving it up to you. What do you see in this image? What do you find interesting? What stands out for you? Find your own meaning in the collage as you gaze at it. Or make your own even better. Have a wonderful day and thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.